Sergei Eisenstein is one of the most discussed and analyzed filmmakers in the history of cinema, and his films and essays have had a lasting impact on film theory. He was one of the first theorists to have a systematic analysis of film and taught revolutionary courses on movie making. Eisenstein's theories of montage were hugely influential, as the editing style of his films was in drastic contrast to continuity editing popularized by D.W. Griffith. Eisenstein began directing in the silent era in Soviet Russia, and his magnum opus Battleship Potemkin is considered by many film critics to be among the greatest works of all time. He started out in the theater and was well versed in many different fields of study. The theater was important to him even as a filmmaker. He made his students spend quite a bit of time on just learning theatrical mise-en-scene. He was interested in science, philosophy, art, linguistics, and literature. Film, to him, was the synthesis of all other forms of art, as well as the highest form. Eisenstein took from an eclectic array of influences and left a massive mark on cinema. His first feature film, Strike, was released in 1925. It was about a suppression of a factory strike in Russia before the Bolshevik Revolution. Next was Battleship Potemkin, considered by many to be his masterwork. It was an international success, and its Odessa Steppe sequence is one of the most studied sequences in cinema history. Eisenstein released two more films in the 1920s, October and The General Line, aka Old and New. All of these movies were heavily tinged with Soviet propaganda. But he then began to receive criticism as the political climate changed. Socialist realism became the accepted way of creating art in Russia, and his films were attacked for excessive formalism and were said to be unintelligible to the average person. Art was supposed to be simple and appeal to everyone, not just the bourgeoisie. He didn't release another film until 1938 with Alexander Nevsky. It had a historic setting and portrayed the Germans as villains, so the film got Eisenstein back in Stalin's good graces. However, soon after the release of Nevsky, Germany and the USSR made a pact and Stalin pulled the film from theaters. Obviously, this pact was eventually broken, so the film was then allowed to be released. In the 1940s, Eisenstein planned a trilogy of films about Ivan the Terrible. Only the first two parts were made because Stalin thought that Ivan's descent into madness should not be shown. He then died in 1948 of a heart attack. Eisenstein's influences were highly diverse, and he drew from all cultures and disciplines. He was interested in many fields that one might think have little to do with filmmaking. Psychology was one of these. According to film historian David Bordwell, Eisenstein cited William James, a seminal 19th century psychologist, as an influence. Bordwell also states, quote, He pursues inquiries into psychoanalysis, hypnosis, gestalt psychology, Vygotsky's semiotic psychology, and Kurt Lewin's field theory, unquote. On the website Senses of Cinema, Dan Shaw said that Eisenstein, quote, was most deeply influenced by Pavlov, Mayakovsky, Marx, and Freud, unquote. In his book Film Sense, Eisenstein refers to Alfred Binet's experiments in the brain, and he also, quote, finds insights in anthropology and linguistics. Furthermore, Eisenstein was fascinated by Asian culture. He viewed the Japanese writing system, which consisted of ideograms, to be analogous to montage in the cinema. A whole chapter of his book Film Form was devoted to this. He said, quote, By the combination of two depictables is achieved the representation of something that is graphically undepictable. For instance, in this system of writing, one could combine the symbols for dog and mouth, and the result would be to bark. Eisenstein compared this to putting two shots together. Together, they have a meaning that is separate from what the two shots mean when they are apart. The Japanese kabuki theater was also important to Eisenstein, and he mentions it in his film form on page 18. The Soviet director took inspiration from all forms of art as well. One of his most important influences was the modernist novelist James Joyce, who wrote Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake. As Chris Rowe wrote, the idea of an inner monologue fascinated Eisenstein, and he used it, quote, within Marxist cinema, unquote. According to David Bordwell, quote, the inner monologue has its source in Ulysses. When Eisenstein read Joyce's novel in 1928, he saw it as an example of how a text could generate abstract conclusions 
with physiological methods. Choice is mentioned many times in David Bordwell's book The Cinema of Eisenstein, and Eisenstein himself refers to Joyce several times in film form and the film sense as well. He wrote, quote, When Joyce and I met in Paris, he was intensely interested in my plans for the inner film monologue, with a far broader scope than is afforded by literature. Eisenstein also took inspiration from visual art. The constructivist movement took place in Russia in the 1920s, and they believed that art should serve a clear social purpose. Bordwell wrote, quote, constructivism, particularly its theatrical manifestations, strongly influenced his films, unquote. Bordwell also claims that the Spanish mannerist painter El Greco was important to Eisenstein. According to Vance Kepley Jr., Eisenstein used paintings to teach his students, such as in the, quote, Last Supper exercise in which Eisenstein challenged students to identify Leonardo's original dramatic core from the images simultaneously present across the work's two dimensions. Music also molded his artistic development. Eisenstein was fascinated by German composer Richard Wagner, and he, quote, found analogies with film in Claude Debussy, unquote, as written by David Bordwell. And in film sense, he discusses the music of Bach and Verdi. Eisenstein viewed film as the combination of all forms of art, the culmination of art history. As stated in the cinema of Eisenstein, quote, cinema is seen as fulfilling those media's greatest accomplishments. It presents a synthesis of painting and drama, music and sculpture, architecture and dancing, landscape and man, visual image and uttered word, unquote. Motion pictures combine the elements and theoretical underpinnings of all art forms. Eisenstein referred to film as a Gesamtkunstwerk, or total artwork, that unified all arts. Eisenstein has left a lasting legacy on filmmaking, and his theoretical output in films have influenced most, if not all, filmmakers that have come since. According to Digital Film Archive, Battleship Potemkin and Eisenstein's theory of montage has inspired directors such as Alfred Hitchcock with Psycho, Steven Spielberg with Schindler's List, Martin Scorsese with Raging Bull, and Brian De Palma with The Untouchables. The Untouchables reference to Potemkin is commonly cited as it is the most obvious example. A Senses of Cinema article goes in-depth into the way Eisenstein's work has affected cinema. It claims that action films depend on his ideas of rhythmic montage, and it states, quote, The careers of Alfred Hitchcock, Brian De Palma, Nicholas Rogue, Francis Ford Coppola, and Oliver Stone, to name just a few, and much of the dynamism of the music video scene, would have been inconceivable without Eisenstein's groundbreaking experimentation, unquote. Bordwell's book goes into detail concerning the importance of Eisenstein to later directors. His works are especially important to art films. Bordwell claims that the experimental filmmaker Stan Brakhage, quote, employed many of Eisenstein's montage methods, unquote. Additionally, Bordwell states, quote, Alexander Nevsky is explicitly cited in Pier Paolo Pasolini's Gospel According to St. Matthew and Wells' Chimes at Midnight. Sergio Leone's abrupt editing and florid use of musical punctuation seemed indebted to the theory and practice of vertical montage. But montage is not the only way that Eisenstein changed the way people make films. Bordwell says, quote, But filmmakers such as Yajuziro Ozu, Robert Bresson, Carl Dreyer, and Jacques Tati have shown that Eisenstein's insistence on through-composed stylistic organization was not a dead end, unquote. No one can deny Eisenstein's importance, and that is why he is still studied 60 years after his death. This is partly why his films and theoretical work were so revolutionary and why he profoundly influenced all feature filmmakers, mainstream and experimental alike.